Happy Earth Day, everyone. I'm Kate Hatmaker. I'm a violinist here in San Diego. I am also the co-founder and executive director of Art of Elan, which is a San Diego nonprofit that has been pioneering unique events and bringing classical music to places you don't expect to find it for over 12 years now. I am so thrilled to be joined by many of my friends and colleagues who you'll meet in a minute here to explore this radical pairing of sounds and swells. And this was actually a concept that we presented at Stone Brewery in Liberty Station here in San Diego almost exactly a year ago, last April. And it was a big experiment, actually, to see if we could gather a bunch of people and be outdoors in this huge movie courtyard to experience this immersive surfing footage that we synchronized with live string quartet classical music. And in order to pay homage to that experiment a year ago, we thought we would sort of re-release it here to you all virtually uh, in honor of Earth Day. And so I'm going to let my good friend, Eric Starr, take it from here and tell you a little bit more about the genesis of this, but we're just so thrilled you can join us again for this, for this grand experiment today. Good afternoon, good evening, good morning, wherever you are watching. Hopefully we have people joining us from around the world. Thank you for taking time on Earth Day to celebrate the Earth and the beauty that it offers with our fun project known as Sounds and Swells. My name is Eric Starr. <clears throat> I am the curator of this project and I'll be your host throughout the evening, throughout these six sets. And <clears throat> we're thrilled to present this for you. As a classical musician and resident of Ocean Beach, San Diego, I'm quite fortunate to watch the waves every day, sometimes while I'm practicing. And I love to body surf every day of the summer. It's just amazing. And when you watch the waves, occasionally there's a great day where <clears throat> the sets line up, big ribbons all the way across the coast and all the way back to the horizon. And it's a perfect corduroy swell. It's just amazing. When our string quartet, the Houseman Quartet performs, they are aiming for perfect alignment of their sound waves and they do achieve it. And that in itself is its own type of corduroy swell, a corduroy sound wave. <clears throat> Thank you for taking the time to watch sounds and swells with us. We'll feature surfing footage from some of the best breaks around the world, combined with <clears throat> recordings from our live performance last year at stone brewing if you hear some crowd noise if you hear a plane going over that all really happened last year we were all there we can verify in these six sets the music and the waves will play off each other in pristine harmony it's really an unsuspecting and otherworldly combination of beauty and power our first set this evening features some of the largest waves ever ridden in nazare portugal this is just north of lisbon where an underwater canyon amplifies the swell right off the coast, producing these monsters that these crazy people go out and surf. People have surfed waves at Nazare approaching 80 feet. It's unbelievable. This process, it's known as constructive interference. It brings these monster waves to the surface in just stunning fashion. And in this next musical selection, which is the second string quartet by Philip Glass, um, you'll really hear how the minimalism perfectly meshes with these giant swells that Eric was just talking about. They're continuously undulating at a slow but really steady pulse with just slight variations. It's really incredible music, beautiful, dramatic, pretty hypnotic actually. Shall we check it out?
Go, Eric. Amazing, right? Just incredible. I love it. So we're back for our second set, and we have two special guest hosts for this second set. We have San Diego's favorite surfing flutist and San Diego Symphony principal flutist, Rose Lombardo, and joining us from Oahu, professional surfer, Leah Dawson. Rose and Leah, thank you so much for being here today. Our second set pairs the music of French impressionist composer Claude Debussy with footage from Chopu in Tahiti, one of the most recognizable waves in the world. So Leah, do you mind sharing with our viewers what makes Chopu so unique? Sure. Chopu is home to the brightest blues that you can imagine. Uh, the water is crystal clear and you can see this amazing sharp reef right under you. But then to imagine a moving mountain of energy in water combusting on this shallow reef shelf that shaped perfectly just to allow this magnificent wave to explode and leave room for surfers to put themselves right in the midst, making the commitment to let go and to trust yourself and to become one with this wild force. Um, Chopu requires the utmost skill and the elimination of doubt and much as musicians tune into their pieces as they play along together. Leah, have you surfed Chopu? I did get to surf Chopu back in 2010 on a much smaller day than I'm sure the footage that you'll be seeing. <laughs> That's awesome, awesome. Rose, <clears throat> in your mind, how does this string quartet by Debussy mesh with these swells at Chopu? I absolutely love this pairing of Debussy and Chopu, two of my favorite things in the whole world. Um, although I will probably never surf that wave. <laughs> I have watched <laughs> hours and hours of footage of it. And when you look at Chopu, all you can think is just perfection. It is the most perfect looking wave. And that is exactly how I feel about WC when I listen to WC. I especially love this pairing of the fourth movement of the WC string quartet. Um, in this music, you'll hear the string players of the quartet playing these really intricate, fast lines, just moving in and out, weaving in and out from each other. And I think it really speaks to how fast the water on the reef is moving at Chopu. However, the overall image and sort of that you get is just an image of perfect perfection and just effortless skill on behalf of the surfer and the musician in order to pull this off. That sounds amazing. Should we check that out? Let's check it out.
Good afternoon again, everyone, or good morning, or good evening from wherever you're watching. Thank you again for joining us at Sounds and Swells. To introduce our third set, <clears throat> we have with us Alex Greenbaum, cellist of the Shredding Houseman Quartet. And just to remind everyone, what you're hearing now was recorded live at Stone Brewing last year at our Sounds and Swells debut. And the Houseman Quartet really does shred, and Alex, Last year, your back was to the video, so how is it actually being able to see this footage? I gotta say, it's uh, it's pretty rad to be able to watch these videos. Yeah, right? <clears throat> so, the third set we have here features surfing in Alaska and Lofoten, Norway, which is actually north of the Arctic Circle, and they're surfing in the winter. I think these people have to be crazy. However, the swell looks amazing. They walk right over these chunks of ice on the beach and paddle out into these beautiful swells and it just looks pristine. I don't know anywhere else where you can surf with snow-capped peaks right on the beach. It's really, really amazing. And while looking for a musical match for this, this footage, we were trying to figure out what is a piece of music that makes us shiver? Yeah, I think this uh, Terry Riley piece that we found really fits the bill. You know, it's amazing how you've um, collected a series of videos from all over the world, right? Surf spots um, everywhere. And I think Terry Riley, similarly, he has influences from all over the world. Uh, Indian classical music, uh, American and European jazz, minimalism, um, really similarly global. So I think that's really cool how that aligns. Um, this piece... Uh, it's called G song because mostly it's just in G around like this one harmony. You know, we talk about a lot of classical music and string quartet music as being like lush and warm. And this, um, well, I don't know, maybe there are moments, but most of the time it's really sort of like icy and centers around this one minor chord and sort of weaves in and out. Um, but like a lot of the most amazing, most powerful music we have, it'll give you chills. So let's check out the video.
And for our fourth set, we're featuring music of Franz Joseph Haydn with footage from The Wedge, which is just up the road from us in San Diego in Newport Beach, California, in the OC, as we call it. And we're joined again by Alex Greenbaum from the Houseman Quartet. So Alex, I've heard you're an expert in these matters. Can you give us some insight into the music of Franz Joseph Haydn? Sure. So Haydn, um... He gets referred to sometimes as Papa Haydn because he was truly the father of the string quartet, um, which we now know and love, you know, two violins, a viola, and a cello. But it wasn't really established as a thing, uh, let alone the sort of pinnacle of chamber music until Haydn. Um, we sort of, you know, playfully, he's string quartet OG, uh, Joseph Haydn. So he really sort of invented the the form as we know it. He wrote 68 of these, um, give or take, depends how you're counting. Um, but, and he really not only was the first to do it, but he really set the standard. And while he established the form, he also was one of the most inventive and creative um, in writing for it in, you know, sort of influenced everyone that followed him. I mean, his actual student, you know, Beethoven studied with him for a second. Um, he and Mozart were uh, good friends and sort of traded ideas back and forth. But then everybody that came afterwards, you know, really owes a debt to Haydn when writing it. And not to mention people like us who play them, we sort of always keep coming back to what he did. So if someone in San Diego wanted to catch a concert of some Haydn, where could they, where could they hear that? Well, I'm glad you asked. Uh, it's true. We in the Houseman Quartet, we have a series we do uh, four times a year um, on the water, funnily enough, uh, at the Maritime Museum. Which it's on the bay in San Diego, so no waves. Don't worry. It's on an old uh, ferry boat, uh, the Berkeley, uh, the part of the Maritime Museum. And yeah, four times a year, we, it's called Haydn Voyages, uh, music at the Maritime. And we have concerts where we pair Haydn, there's always at least one Haydn quartet, often two, and it's paired with um, music that was written much more recently, um, the Terry Riley you heard before this was on that series and a few of the other selections. Um, and it's really cool for us to sort of go through all these amazing quartets, but also see how other composers have sort of responded, whether directly to Haydn or totally in their own uh, voice. And yeah, it's a real great adventure for us. So. Um, we hope that that will resume on August 30th is our next one. So the real question I want to ask, have you ever wiped out playing Haydn? <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> so 
Haydn, um, along with being sort of, you know, this master that we're talking about who really uh, created the form and the string quartet and it made so many inventive uh, advancements with it, um, he was also pretty hilarious, um, like a really quirky, funny sense of humor. And he throws a lot of tricks in there and curveballs. And yeah, I would say anybody who's played a good number of Haydn quartets has a few stories about um, eating it. Uh, yeah. Gnarly. So <clears throat> speaking of quirky, the break that is paired with Haydn is the wedge in Newport Beach. And <clears throat> for those who don't know, the wedge is a beach break where there is a jetty on the south side of the beach and the swell comes in, rebounds off the jetty and bounces back towards shore. At the same time, the beach is pretty steep. And so the water is coming back from the beach and from the jetty <clears throat> and it forms these massive triangular waves right on the beach, hence the name The Wedge. And while the music of Haydn is prim and proper, what this wave does to the people who attempt to write it is anything but. I think that the lightness and the levity of a Haydn scherzo is just a hilarious combination with this footage from The Wedge. And for those of you watching at home, which I think is everyone, Feel free to laugh out loud, even if you're by yourself. I think it will make us all feel a little more normal that way. Uh, shall we watch this? <laughs> Thank you. 
Welcome back, everyone. Thank you again for joining us. To introduce this fifth set, we are once again joined by Rose Lombardo and Leah Dawson. And as we have been preparing for this project, we started discussing how being a musician and being a surfer seem to relate. If nothing else, they really are lifelong obsessions, but I really think it's deeper than that. Rose, you're both a musician and a surfer. Do you feel that there is a connection? Absolutely. Performing music and surfing a wave both require creativity, technical nimbleness, and a flow state of mind in order to be in the zone. The flow mindset really allows the surfer to adjust their body with micro movements to respond to the spontaneous changes in the energy and the speed and the character of a wave much like a musician in an ensemble reacts to his colleagues with the changes in energy and tempo during a live performance. Um, I've been so fortunate to experience both cultures, the surf culture and the classical music culture. Surfers and musicians have dedicated their lives to the pursuit of growth in their field, not just for the mere point of getting better, but in complete service to the art form and for sharing that art form with others. Each community is also equally passionate about giving back, whether it be through environmental activism, like our friend Leah here, or through musical education. Being surrounded by such dedication has allowed me to live in real reverence for what the earth has to offer and also for the beauty of what music brings to people's lives. Now, Leah, you're a professional surfer, but you're also a musician. And Rose is a professional musician who's also a surfer. So when you met, did you strike up a kinship immediately? Oh, for sure. I, I think her laugh is, is what um, brought the kinship 
uh, immediately. And then I learned that um, she's an exceptional musician and she charges um, as a great surfer. So um, yeah, I, I've always been um, in awe of, of Rose and um, I think the levity that she brings to life and um, I think the excitement and the passion that it takes to uh, be a musician at her level um, is is a form of dedication that um, I mean I've I've loved surfing my whole life and I've dedicated myself to it but I know the amount of I I actually don't know the amount of hours <laughs> that has gone into practicing over and over and over again. Um, and surfing is something that, yes, we can practice. We'll go out and have these sessions. But um, if there is a difference between surfing and music, um, there is no real repetition in surfing. It's all spontaneous. Um, but in music, similarly, um, you are learning to go with the flow. And while there can be a set structure, there's still spontaneity and flow within that and personality and breath that comes through and style that comes through. Um, for me, the, the most intricate connection of these two art forms is that they're both waves um, and they're both this amazing creation and reality of, of living on earth. The fact that waves exist and that we can ride them and that sound waves exist and that we can hear them and you can put these instruments together that can create all these different types of emotions. Um, there are bodies of art that uh, I cherish and I um, am forever, I think, in awe of learning how to utilize them both to grow their creativity and also their medicine. Um, in my own life, but also in the lives of others. Well, I think you're both fantastic. We're really lucky to have you on this broadcast. Our fifth set combines surf from Mavericks, California, which is in Half Moon Bay, just a little south of San Francisco, with music of Lou Harrison, who was a longtime Bay Area, Bay Area resident, although there's no telling if Lou Harrison ever paddled out at Mavericks. Mm -hmm. So Leah, do you mind giving our viewers a little insight as to what it might actually be like to surf one of these monsters at Mavericks? Sure. Um, Mavericks is one of the most revered big waves in the world, and for good reason. This wave breaks outside of these jagged rock cliffs, and the energy often looks monstrous and wild and, and windy. There's elements of great white sharks and freezing cold water, um, so much so that if you put your head under, you get an ice cream headache right away. And so people wear these thick wetsuits that enable them to go and be able to operate in these wild environments. Um, but at Mavericks, it's cold and it's dark. Uh, so it takes your full commitment and then some to be able to ride these waves. Uh, when you're paddling into a wave, you're pushing yourself, literally pushing yourself down the wave of what could be like a three-story building or even bigger. These wave riders that ride Mavericks seek a thrill of Earth's power that um, is unmarked in, in a way that um, it, it truly shows the amazing ability of humans to match their courage with the might the mightiest powers of our earth it's incredible rose how do you feel about this pairing of lou harrison's quartet set number one with mavericks i really think this pairing is so cool this uh lou harrison piece um really has a very minimalistic style to it and I think that really speaks to just the murky, mysterious, and terrifying abyss that is Mavericks. Um, this piece opens up with the viola and the cello playing really raw, like perfect uh, intervals, fourths and fifths. Um, and it's just two musicians playing together um, very quietly, very slowly. And it sets this really eerie atmosphere 
for for the footage that you're going to see of this insane wave. Um, I particularly love how, as the music goes on, more members of the quartet come in uh, to join the cello and the viola. And at that moment, you'll see in the footage that more than one person can ride a wave at Mavericks, <laughs> the same wave. So you'll see uh, everything from one person riding a wave to two, three, four, um, which is just amazing. Um, and then finally, the sort of apex moment of this footage that you'll see is towards the end, we'll see this beautiful slow-mo footage of Ken Collins taking like the craziest, steepest drop um, with the whole wave just pitching over him and just trying his best to outrun it. And in this moment, uh, the music comes to a beautiful viola solo where the other members of the quartet stop playing and it's just viola. And I particularly love this aesthetic because the viola just as an instrument where it sits in its range between the cello and the violin, it kind of sounds like a voice that's right on the edge of its abilities. And that is that moment in dropping in on a ledge, a wall, a mountain like Mavericks, I think is the perfect pairing. Um, and the courage that it takes is kind of unbelievable. Yeah, amazing. And to let our viewers know, this is Earth Day 2020. Musicians are all essentially in quarantine. And so there may be an appearance by the virtual Houseman Quartet in this video. Shall we see if we can find them?
It's amazing, right? I love that set every time I see it. Just incredible, the music and those huge swells of Mavericks, just the unbelievable combination. In our final set, we're featuring music of Felix Mendelssohn with footage from the Bonsai Pipeline in Hawaii and Skeleton Bay, Namibia, just off the west coast of Africa. And we have a new guest to help introduce this final set. His name is Mike Starr. I know him as Cousin Mike because he's my cousin. And Mike was literally born surfing in Hawaii and he's been a resident and a surfer in San Diego for decades. So Mike, one of the breaks we're about to feature is Pipeline. Have you ever surfed Pipeline? Aloha, Eric. Yes, I have. That's gnarly. Uh, so as someone who's actually surfed Pipeline, when you're watching these swells, what are some things that come to mind? Well, the first thing with Pipeline that I think about is danger. When I'm dropping in at Pipeline and I'm looking down the face of the wave, it's so steep. What I'm actually looking at is the reef, which is hard to see uh, from the shore, but it's only about three feet deep. And it's right there in front of me as I'm sliding down a wet wall, trying to slow myself down, get into the barrel. And yet I know it's right there, right under the water and it's dangerous and people have died here and many have been injured. And that's what I'm thinking about first and foremost. So have you surfed a pipeline when it's as big as what we're about to see? Not quite that big, but the steepness of the face never changes even when it's smaller. It's still vertical. So in what we're about to see, are these just like regular surfers who paddled out that day and happened to catch some nice swells? Absolutely not. In <laughs> fact, I would estimate um, maybe two to 300 people in the entire world can surf pipeline at this size. It's amazing, amazing. So they're defying death, they're incredibly skilled, but what if someone were to just walk up on the beach and take in the scene, what would they see? Well, what's amazing about Pipeline is that it's a stadium setting. There's many people on the beach and the waves break so close to shore that you can actually hear them crash. You can feel it in the sand. And speaking of the sand, it's a bright white sand, super beautiful. The blues of deep, dark blues of the ocean as it hits the reef, it turns a turquoise color. And the palm trees with the greens and the smell of verdant jungle and ocean in the air, it's a stadium unlike any other. Sounds amazing. So we're going to seamlessly follow this pipeline footage with a single wave from Skeleton Bay. And this is on the west coast of Africa in Namibia. And this is one of the most incredible barrels in the world. And Mike, as someone who surfed a pipeline, I don't know that you've ever been to Namibia, but how unique is this swell that we're about to see at Skeleton Bay? This swell is very rare. And whereas at Pipeline, maybe you could get a three to five second uh, tube, which is being inside the wave, uh, at Skeleton Bay, you can get 10 second tubes and you can have them over and over and over on the same wave, extremely rare uh, and unique. It's, a, it's ridiculous. Uh, from a surfer's perspective, it's a fantasy. Uh, I would say it's really a ride of a lifetime. That's awesome. So Kate, so we're joined again by Kate Hatmaker from Art of Alon, an amazing violinist with the San Diego Symphony. Kate, Mike's talking about this footage. It's there's danger, there's skill, there's beauty. Does the music of Mendelssohn that we're about to hear represent those things as well? Well, skill and beauty, absolutely. This is truly gorgeous music that's played very, very skillfully by the Hausmann Quartet. And while it might not seem physically dangerous, it's actually incredibly uh, technically demanding. So there is actually a danger in that way. Um, it's music actually that's filled with a lot of fire, a lot of passion, just tons of raw emotion. And I believe it was actually written just after the death of Mendelssohn's sister, who he was very close with and who was a, a composer and a musician herself. So I think that rawness really comes through in this music. So would you say that for the Houseman Quartet, this is the ride of a lifetime? <laughs> Absolutely. And who knows, maybe someday we'll even get them out there on the wave. 
Yeah, I think we'll get a really big paddleboard and put them all on it at the same time. <laughs> I think it'd be a good team building activity. <laughs> we'll see what you say about that. <laughs> so before we see our last set of the evening, I just wanted to thank everyone for watching. Thank you so much for joining us. This has been an incredibly fun project to put together. Thank you to William Zasher, who you can't see, but he's the, the man behind the screen running this broadcast, doing an amazing job. Thank you so much to all of our guest hosts, Rose Lombardo, Leah Dawson, Alex Greenbaum, Kate Hatmaker, Mike Starr, Cousin Mike, and huge thank you to the Houseman Quartet for just shredding last April when we were at Stone Brewing. They sound amazing and just, just love this project. And for everyone who is out there watching, please stay in touch with us. Stay connected with Art of Alon. You can follow Art of Alon on social media, on Instagram, on Facebook, on the internet artofalon.org. So really stay in touch, look for more fun projects, more sounds and swells. And uh, I think we should probably check out this ride of a lifetime. <laughs>